Porky, he say that. There's something that that I, I want to talk about, and I know everybody around here just absolutely loves Dan Wilkin of the USA Today. Everybody just really loves every, everything favorite. he writes. But he wrote something about he tied Ole Miss hiring Chris Beard in Alabama and Brandon Miller together into a column, and there is some truth to what he's saying, but what what is getting lost on a lot of these media types is the hyperbole makes their position unserious. And what Wolken wrote, I think, is a great example of how the media views the South in general and those stereotypes and generalizations are not only not rooted in reality, but are completely ignoring what goes on literally everywhere else. Let me tell you what uh, part of what he wrote. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but the uh, the headline is Alabama's Brandon Miller, Ole Miss's Chris Beard, symbolizes SEC's tarnished image. Here's the subhead. After the Brandon Miller incident and Chris Beard hiring, we have a very clear picture of what the SEC stands for. Just avoid prosecution, baby. Here's a quote from the story, or the column. In the end, we now have a very clear picture of where the SEC is and what it stands for. Just avoid prosecution. That's it. That's all it takes in Greg Sankey's SEC these days to carry the banner of college sports' most successful conference. As long as you can add banners and dollars to the league's bottom line, the rest will take care of itself. So I'm not going to read the rest of it. You can seek it out and find it if you want. What's frustrating about reading stuff like this is the hyperbole associated with it. And here's what I mean by that. Alabama's fair game for criticism. Absolutely they're fair. they are fair game with the way they've handled this. Ole Miss is fair game for criticism. If you're an Ole Miss fan and you don't like the criticism, you should have expected it. I mean, we, we kind of told you that it was coming. The questions that were asked at the press conference, not a single one was inappropriate. When you hire somebody two months after an arrest of that nature, I know that she released a statement shortly thereafter disputing some of the things that were in the police report. That is part of the story. The police report is also part of the story. It is a situation that warranted the questions that he was asked. And if you wanted to be critical of Ole Miss for making that hire, it is absolutely fair game, 100% fair game. What, what really frustrates me, though, is people like this do things like now and the SEC. As if this is new, this phenomenon of do whatever it takes to win and protect sports is not only new, but it's geofenced around just the South. Because a very quick internet search tells you that a decades-long cover-up of the abuse of children for the sake of protecting football didn't happen in the SEC. That happened elsewhere in the non-southern state of Pennsylvania. That same institution, by the way, hired James Franklin after what he did at Vanderbilt, by the way. Nobody criticized that. I don't remember this column, but anyway. But it's not just Penn State. Michigan State with Larry Nassar. Michigan is involved in something like that. So is Ohio State. In the name of sports, the cover-up and protection of vile, disgusting criminal behavior was done in the name of protecting sports in the Big Ten. Now, this this criticism, this phenomenon, I think is, I think it's deeper than just a, a sports thing. I think this is a really good example or an encapsulation of how the media views the South. I think it's deeper than just sports. They, they think that we have a broken culture in the South, despite not living here or being here or experiencing the people here. I see it all the time. I see those biases reflected in, in big media all the time. And especially during... What's up? The only thing I would, the only thing I would say that, that, you know, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but Wolken does live in Atlanta. He does, and it, it's still a reflection of... The, the biases towards the culture here. Yeah, uh, I agree. If, if, during COVID, for example, remember when the George Floyd happened and all of those protests yeah. happened and 
you, you turn on the TV and, and, and all they would say, and they still talk about it to this day, this deeply divided country. And they, they point fingers at the South and talk about how backwards we are. I remember shortly thereafter that happened and all of the protests and all of that were going on. I took my, my son to a park in Jackson. And there were black kids and white kids playing together and their parents talking to each other and smiling and laughing and engaging in normal conversation. And I thought, what I'm seeing in front of my eyes is real. That's, that's reality here. And what you see on TV is false. That's how the media portrays mm-hmm. us. We have an incredibly friendly and giving and engaging culture, but they try to tell you that we're backwards. And it's reflected in columns like this. Oh, the SEC's Greg Sankey is proud of his broken culture as if the Big Ten doesn't have their biggest brands involved in decades-long cover-up of sexual assault for the sake of protecting sports. But why is it only the SEC that gets the finger pointed at your culture's broken? You guys only care about winning. You guys only care about sports when it happens freaking everywhere. It doesn't make it okay, but be honest about it. But everybody likes to finger point at the South because we're the poor and dumb ones, right? We have the broken culture because of things that happened decades ago that none of us controlled. I hate people like Dan Wolkin, and I hate people like these legacy media types in Los Angeles and New York that point to our culture and say we're broken when they, in their own backyards, are just as broken, if not more, than we are. That's what I hate about stuff like this. It's only the SEC that puts sports above everything else. That's garbage. In five seconds on Google tells you that no... Broken culture in the Big Ten as well. Broken culture everywhere. Everywhere. 